Hello everyone, your favorite Senso Tech Jedi, Lisi here, and in this video I'm going to do an overview of the classroom management tools in the new Senso portal. Let's get right into it. When you want to navigate to your new Senso portal, you will now go to app.senso.cloud. You will be presented with options for signing on with your email or password, or with our single sign-on options down here at the bottom. Once you have made your selection and logged into your portal, you will be presented with three main areas. You have your groups area, your list view and thumbnail view area, and your toolbar area. Let's start with the groups area first. The groups area is going to include any integrations that have been set up for your portal. Integrations are going to be classes for Google Classrooms, uh, Microsoft Teams. Those are gonna be examples of integrated classrooms. When you want to see the students in those classrooms, you would simply just select those sections and you will see the students that have joined or have been added into those classes. Now you may also have some custom built groups listed below that that have been set up by your organizational admin, but don't worry if you don't see those at the bottom, that just means your portal is only using integrated groups. Once you have made your selection, you will see those devices here in list view. List view is going to give you some information like the device name and the user logged in. You can even refresh your users, which is super handy to have when you have students that are coming in, getting logged in, maybe at the beginning of the day or the beginning of the class, you can go ahead and refresh those group members so you can see them as they're joining up into your portal. Thumbnail view is going to give you those live thumbnails of the devices. So here in list view, they're going to list the online devices. Again, you can refresh your group members and in thumbnail view, you're going to have these live thumbnails of those devices. You have some options listed right above your thumbnails. You can select all your devices or you can select individual devices using these checkboxes. Now these checkboxes are important when you are running tools. If you want to run tools on a certain set of devices or all your devices, that's what those checkboxes are for. You can filter your thumbnails. You'll see you have some options here. You can change the thumbnail title. That's gonna be this little title bar right here above the thumbnails. Um, for my Chromebooks and Windows devices, maybe you have some Mac or iOS listed in here as well. You can go ahead and change that thumbnail title. Now switch display is going to switch the display. Maybe you have a window set up where there are dual monitors on those Windows devices. You can go ahead and switch that display. You also can change the quality. Now the quality is going to be the resolution or how clear you can see these live thumbnails. Go to, uh, you can go ahead and change it to high quality if you like. It is not gonna slow it down at all for remote access. For your Windows devices, you have an extra tool listed in here. You can take mouse control only. So if I select one of my Windows devices using that little check box that we talked about earlier, I can choose take mouse control only. Now you'll see down here at the bottom, there is a little icon that says mouse control only. Now I can open, close, and I control the device right here in this thumbnail view with this mouse control. When I want to release that tool, I would come up to the stop mouse only control and you'll see the icon has gone away. I can also make my thumbnails bigger. I can make them smaller using the magnifying glass. Now you have some extra options here in thumbnail view. You can use what we call tabbed view. Tabbed view is when you select an individual device and open it up in a separate tab. Now you can have multiple devices opened up in tabbed view and you can switch back and forth. Now different devices will have different options. For Chrome devices, you can't take control of a Chrome device like you can a Windows device, but we've just moved the tools that you can use to control that Chrome book up here in the toolbar. So for a Windows device, you'll see you can do things like have shared control or full control. Shared control means you and the user can control the device. Full control means you have full control of the device and you can uh, take control of it and close things, open things up, type on it, whatever you need to do taking control of that device. 
You can uh, copy and paste back and forth. You can change the screen quality. You can even change the screen scale. Maybe you need to take it out to full screen. And you can do a screenshot of that device. On this Chromebook, your options are screen scale. You can change the quality or you can grab a screenshot. When you are utilizing tools on these devices, uh, and you are in tab view, the tool will only run on that one device. So if you are wanting to run a tool across multiple devices at any one time, you would want to come on back here to thumbnail view and either select all or pick and choose which devices you want to run those tools on. So let's go ahead and let's move up here into the toolbar and let's talk about the tools. All the way over here to the right, you can filter the modules. Here you can change which modules, uh, which category of modules you'd like to see, whether they make a screen change or they operate the device somehow, or you can see which platforms they work on. Here are the Windows tools, Chrome tools, Mac OS tools, and iOS. For this video, I'm going to leave it on all platforms, but if you want to limit it to just the tools for certain devices, that's right there in those three dots. You can even click on and move your tools around. You'll see there's a little icon right there. You see when I click on it and drag, I can move those tools around. Let's start with close active tab. Now close active tab, I uh, will close whatever active tab is open in a browser. So I can select one or all my devices. And when I click run, it will go ahead and you'll see it will close the active tab uh, of that browser. Disable internet. One of the great things about this, think of this as like a refocusing tool. You can refocus your class, maybe you're giving a lot of instructions, and you want to disable the browser. So this is going to disable that browser so that they cannot use the browser that they're working on. Now it doesn't turn off the internet, it just disables the browser. And you get this little icon down here that lets you know that the internet has been disabled. When you enable the internet, that icon will go away and they will be able to refresh or open and close the browser and get back to work on whatever they were doing beforehand. End session. This is a great tool for your Windows devices. You have the ability to log out, restart, or shut down your devices. You can give a customized display message. You can allow users to override this. This is really great if at the end of the day you're in a different classroom and you're shutting down labs or IT suites of computers. You can go ahead and allow your users to cancel if they're sitting in front of it getting some work done. You can wait until the uh, user or the device is idle and you can toggle on or off whether this will work on your Windows servers or not. Live chat, you can have a live chat with your users. So again, one or multiple users at a time. And when you have sent that message to them, you'll see that it'll pop up on their screen and you can have that live chat back and forth with them. Now, keep in mind, this is something that is from teacher to student only. It is not student to student, nor can a student uh, start it with a teacher. It's just from the teacher to the student. When you toggle this end and close chat option and go ahead and select those users and run it, it will go ahead and let them know that the chat has ended and they need to close that window. Mute sound. You can mute the input or the output of the selected devices. You can choose whether it's the microphone, the speakers, and you can even control the volume that they can turn it up or down to utilizing this tool. Quick question. You can ask a question with up to four different answer choices. And you'll notice that some of these have this need help link on it. If you need help and you uh, want to go ahead and read the KB article about it, if you click on that, it will go ahead and open up that KB article for you right there. Go ahead and copy that for another tool we're gonna utilize in just a moment. Lock screen is a great way to refocus the class, maybe pull the attention back, especially if you're giving out uh, lesson instructions. You can click lock and it will go ahead and lock those devices. You can give a customized message. You can even choose uh, colors that you want this to be. And then when you click unlock, it will go ahead and unlock the device and they can go right back to work. Now, remote control is what we've been doing on these Windows devices. It's just another way to take remote control of that device outside of taking it into tabbed view. 
Now, Run Website is one of our most popular tools because it gives you the ability to run websites in all these uh, default browsers that you can choose. And when you put the web address in, you would just copy and paste that address in. And you'll see here when you click Run, it's going to go ahead and open that up on the devices. So just keep in mind you would want to copy and paste the the whole URL so for here if I wanted to take them over to code.org I would just simply copy that and then come on over here to this tool let me go ahead and open it up again so I can clear it out and then I can choose my default browser or I can just paste uh, my domain in there that I want to open up and click run and it's going to go ahead and run that on these devices send a file uh, because this is a cloud-based tool you can think of this as a cloud folder you can save it to give some extra arguments against it you could auto run um, really I think the only thing you probably will want to do is just send the file to them you may not need to utilize any of the username or password um, that options are on here that's more for the technical side of things so here selected files you would just upload the files here and they will stay within your portal so that if you're working from home and putting lesson plans together and you want to send them to your portal for the next day they will stay there in that portal and then you can send them out to your users and then you have send message this is different than live chat this is going to send a static message this there's no need to have that live chat back and forth this is just a static message to your users all right, so that is a very brief overview of the classroom management tools. Please look for the list of videos that are going to come after this that will take a deeper dive in each one of those uh, individual tool sets at the top. Um, things like in session, disable internet, all of these tools will have separate videos. All right, thanks everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.